At L&M Fine Jewelry, we hand select our diamonds to give you the very best prices possible. Monty knows a great deal when he finds one. Find your great deal at L&M Fine Jewelry. Your diamond destination. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Samuel Kim here, and I'm back with another one. I appreciate you guys for tapping into yet another breakdown. Today, we are going to be breaking down Montana State versus Portland State. Um, Montana moved to Montana State, excuse me. Montana State moved to 8 0 for the first time in I don't know how long. I know they were 7 0 for the first time since I think it was 78, might have been 56. It's been a long time since Montana State has been um, undefeated and been this good. They look really good. They've been playing really good football. Um, Tommy Malott, 15 for 20, 239 yards, three touchdowns. Scott Trey Humphrey, a career high, 14, or not carries, I don't think, but a career high yardage, 14 carries, 160 yards, two touchdowns. Um, he played an amazing game. He had an average of 11.4 yards a carry. He's been playing at a really high level. Um, their defense had a really good game, obviously. Taco Dowler, three receptions, 78 yards, and a touchdown. Um, it was really a beatdown by Montana State. This shouldn't be a super long breakdown, but we're going to be breaking down um, some of the highlights of this game. So make sure you guys hit the like. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe. Make sure you guys um, leave me a comment down below, and we will get straight into it. Okay, Montana State started off with the ball, and what are they going to do in 12 personnel? Looks like they're trying to run a counter, um, two tight end counter, though. So they got five men on the line of scrimmage, 12 personnel, two tight ends, one running back on the field. And you see the two tight ends pulling around. Um, they both went to the same guy, but it kind of looks like a counter look. Um, all your linemen inside here are blocking down, leaving that in man on the line of scrimmage. First tight end across is going to... Or maybe it was a read because it looks like this one tight end is trying to arc around. So maybe Tommy could have kept it. Just what it feels like to me. Either way, Scott Humphrey is going to barrel forward. Get about four yards on. I guess they gave him two. Gosh, look like he got more than that. Oh, well. Next play. Got a second and eight. He's going to hand it off to Scott Trey Humphrey. And the hole's going to be wide open. He's going to take off. He is going to take off. Really good blocks up front by the offensive line. He's virtually untouched. They even get up to that third level on that safety with their tight end. Their tight end is going to get up to that third level on the safety on the um, outside zone, inside zone play. I think it looks like an inside zone play. Either way, a zone run. Gets up to that third level on that safety. Then it's just green grass in front of Scott Trey Humphrey. That defensive back for Portland State is going to run him down, though. Touchdown saving tackle right there touchdown saving tackle because without that it was um probably end zone for scott Trey humphrey first of many of a few long runs for scott Trey humphrey on the day yesterday that was one of them pre-snap motion with taco dollar swing it out to their running back um ontario latin henley they've been playing a ton of running backs colson coon jared white um chance wilson or he's a quarterback um, I don't see Adam Jones had any carries yesterday on here. This is interesting. I wonder if he's injured or what's going on with that. But a really good play on second and seven to um, Latin Henley. He's catching the swing route. Everybody's just blocking downfield. Even Taco Dallas getting into the blocking scheme. I really like that they brought, um, I think this is Lanyada Alexander. They brought him down on this block to come and crack one of those backers. Might even be a nickel. Might even be a safety. Went and cracked this defender inside. Taco Dowler on the pre-snap motion is um, arcing outside of that. He gets a good block. And then, you know, eventually they're able to bring him down and get him a little leverage. But not after he gets really good yardage and gets him down inside the five-yard line. Then they hand it off to Scott Trey Humphrey. And he's virtually untouched going into the end zone. Really good run right there. Really, really good run there from Scott Trey Humphrey. You get to see it right here. Really good blocks. You see Mr. Weir working up to that second level. And I guess their backer right here had a chance to get him. He had to come around this D tackle and this offensive lineman. But he had an opportunity. Good block from the tight end getting up to the second level right here. Not even getting up to the second level. Just moving this guy to the second level. And he's unable to make the hit on... Humphrey, and they walk into the end zone. Got a third and seven for Portland State. Their offense, man, I think they had, like, one good drive in this game where they, I mean, they had a few towards the end of the game, but, like, 
when Montana State had most of their starters in the game. They had maybe one good drive, and it ended up fizzling out. But, you know, Montana State's going to bring the pressure right here. You see they got five on the line of scrimmage pre-snap. Definitely looks like man. Definitely looks like man. You got a one high safety above. Eventually, they're going to end up rushing four, three, four, five. So five, um, you checked your running back, but just the way the rush came, they don't have enough numbers to pick it up. So they end up getting two, one free rusher. It ends up being um, Ryland Ort, who's the free rusher. Um, and luckily for them, he's not going to get a hit. But this ended up looking like zero man. It looks like zero because you got your one high safety who's covering the tight end. So it looks like <clears throat> it looks like zero. But you got a few um, <clears throat> you got a few droppers here. So your um, end right here dropped out into coverage and one of your linebackers. Or this might be another end dropped out in coverage. But you got a few people out in coverage dropping out linebacker in your end. Um, Brother Greeby on the other side. Here you go. Got a third and two for Portland State. I think they got him with a um, um, unnecessary or roughing the quarterback. Yeah, definitely looked like roughing the quarterback. So that's going to keep their drive alive. And save for this or roughing the passer call, um, Montana State probably would have gotten the ball in really, really good field position. So that's going to keep the drive alive for Portland State. They're faced with a third and two. Going to get a read with the tight end arcing. So kind of looks like split zone right here until you get here and the quarterback keeps it the tight ends the lead blocker for him he's going to get around the edge and get the first down if one thing Dante Shashere can do is run the ball he ran for 200 yards last week so um that is not one of his um that is not something that he struggles to do really good job of I mean really good rush here from um Montana State got a lot of white jerseys around Shashere um, and somehow he's able to get the ball off. Nobody open downfield. Can't really 100% see the coverage that Montana State's trying to get into. Looks like they're trying to get into a three high. So three double cloud. It's fourth and 12. So it looks like they're trying to get into a three double cloud. They try to disguise it. So they're making it look potentially like it's a zero man maybe or some type of not even man. Just by the way these guys are standing, you wouldn't think pre-snap that it's man. But you wouldn't think that it's three double cloud. And then until they get into it, these guys back out three high, middle high, third, middle high, third, or deep third, deep middle third, um, this third over here. And then you got two flat defenders, three double cloud on fourth and long. It's a really safe coverage. You're dropping two linebackers out to play hooks as well. You end up only rushing four and the four ends up creating pressure on Sashere and they end up almost getting the sack. He's able to get the ball off, but it's to nobody on fourth and 12. Really good. Really good play from Montana State. Um, really good disguise from them as well. Second and 15 coming up. They're going to get right back to it. They're going to throw the ball. Tommy Malott's going to throw it on what seems to be like um, an RPO. I don't know if I would call it an RPO because I don't know if these guys are run blocking. Yeah, they're pass blocking. So this is a play action pass. Your tight end's going to act like he's blocking. Get around the edge right here. So you see him act like he's blocking for the outside run and whole time he's getting down the middle of the field Tommy Mallott sees him gets the ball into his hands and it's a big time play really good job right there really really good job right there chunk play chunk play on second and 15 second and seven coming up for Montana State you got a RPO so this is something that they ran a ton last year I haven't seen it as much this year and they're getting to it a little bit different way. A lot of times it'd be the, the tight end on a pre-snap motion coming down the line of scrimmage. But it's a read pass option. So an RPO with um, he can either hand it off to Scott Trey Humphrey on the inside. If he doesn't, if he reads this end man on the line of scrimmage as firing on Scott Trey Humphrey, he can pull it, get outside the tackles. Um, and in this case, he decided to pull it. Um, and the guy just missed him. He can throw it or he can run it. He's going to throw it late. And it's going to end up being a touchdown. Really big time play right there. He's got a lot of options here. He can run it. He can throw it. <clears throat> and, you know, they had him out leveraged right here. You got a green jersey chasing you, a green jersey down the line of scrimmage. But your tight end has everybody out leveraged. And they're blocking downfield as well. So, um, interesting play there. Because he is past the line of scrimmage. I don't know if that would can be considered an offensive pass interference. Because I thought that this only wasn't considered an offensive pass interference if they were 
weren't blocking downfield. You also have a lineman who's pretty far downfield. Not going to lie to you. Um, but, you know, they didn't call it. But could have had a couple illegal man downfield. Could have had um, offensive pass interference, I think, potentially. But instead, it's a touchdown. Really good play. Good play. He, oh, no, they did call something. Okay. Okay. What did they call? Illegal man downfield. Yeah. Okay. I was like, he's pretty. Wait. Oh, yeah. Pass interference. Yes. Okay. Both penalties that I pointed out. They're going to take the offensive pass interference, and it's going to end up being into the first quarter. And Montana State's going to get the ball back on a third and about 15, third and 14, maybe. Snapping the ball. Get it off to your receiver, Alexander, who's going to fall forward for really good yardage. Really good play right here for him not to give up and just run out of bounds. You understand that maybe your team might potentially go for it on fourth down. So let me try to maximize this yardage right here. And they indeed are going for it on fourth and two. They're going to hand it off to Scott Trey Humphrey, and he's going to get stuffed, man. This is like, I think this was the only stop that Portland State was able to produce against Montana State. Um, not mad at, at the call for Montana State. Um, it's just not blocked up very well. You know, Portland State's getting through the line of scrimmage pretty easily, and they're able to get Scott Trey Humphrey behind the line of scrimmage. Really good play there. Really good play there from Portland State. So they get the ball back. First and 10, 14 minutes to go in the second quarter. Going to hand it off to the running back of Portland State. And this might be one of their biggest plays of the day. Might be one of their biggest plays of the day. DeLon Thomas had a 24-yard run, and that was their longest play of the day. 24-yard rush. Well, this might not even be that rush. Looks to be that rush, though. I think this is that 24-yard run. For sure. He had 12 carries, 78 yards, and a touchdown. His touchdown was, I think, the last touchdown of the game, or second-to-last touchdown of the game, actually. Dante Sasher is trying to hit his receiver out here. Um, looks like Montana State's in a man coverage. One high man. So, look, man eyes, man eyes, man eyes. They're in an empty formation. Man and man, they're on different levels just in case they try to run a rub route so they can still get there. But it's man all the way, as you see. And then you got two hooks on the inside <clears throat> from your backers. Um, they end up only rushing three. Um, so they're playing a lot of coverage and saturate his guy has there's a lane to put that ball That's a tough ball to hit um, But in a game like this, these are the passes that you have to hit you got to be able to layer it in there um, And he just wasn't able to get it on his guy on third and six decent coverage from the linebacker Not able to complete it first and ten for Montana State they get the ball back and You see they're running a little boot action out here now. This is a, a, a terrible show of tackling i must say but you're gonna get the play action then you get the naked boot so you got the ghost flat you got your tight end on the back end rohan no that's not rohan jones you got your tight end on the back end so rohan jones i think this is rohan jones on the ghost flat you got your other tight end because they're in 12 personnel coming on over and then you have taco dowler down here running what seems to be like a, a flood or sail corner um my belief is that Ty McCullough ran the deep corner and um, Taco Dowler ran the underneath corner route. Might even be an underneath flood. Um, just kind of like a levels concept. Kind of seems like an underneath flood more than it seems like a, an over-the-top corner. This is something, or, in, or an underneath corner. This is something that a lot of people have been running this year. You get the, the um, ghost flat over, you get the deep corner, and then you run the flood underneath it um, with your quarterback rolling out. It's pretty hard for the defense to cover if they're in the right coverage. And Taco Dowler is going to get the ball in his hands wide open. So this is where it really gets bad. Not great tackling right here from the Portland State defender. Terrible tackling right here. I mean, I know you're going for the ball, but he's already got enough yardage, man. Just get him on the ground. I mean, and there's a method to – I never played defense. I played defense back in youth ball. And back – I think ninth grade was the last year I played – no. Eighth or ninth grade was the last year I played defense. If you're going to go – I think ninth grade. But if you're going to go for the ball here – you got to grab him. I'm pretty sure they teach that. Like, make sure you secure the tackle first and then go for the ball, correct? He does not wrap up at all, shoots for the ball, doesn't get it, and then that allows Taco Dowler to get upfield and complete the long reception for the touchdown. Taco Dowler has been playing really, really good football. Um, he That was a 57-yard reception, touchdown reception right there for him. But, you know, he's been their number one receiver so far this year. He's been playing really good football, and, that's going to have to continue this one thing. Montana State is undefeated. They've been playing really good football. But one thing I think that could end up biting them is and they've been getting hit, excuse me, hit with some injuries. Obviously, most of their really, really good players are still healthy. 
but Ty McCullough seemed to get hurt yesterday. It looked like a shoulder injury. Um, I don't know what the nature of that injury was, but looked like that wasn't a great sign. And then they lost their linebacker. Um, I've heard they lost uh, multiple players to ACL injuries, so they're just getting hit with the injury bug here and there. But they're still beating up on teams, so um, that's a good sign. Um, Dante Sachery is going to drop back here on a third and long. Going to try to find somebody. Once again, they're running a three-double cloud. So it's a third and 15, three-double cloud. Keep three high over the top. Keep two underneath and then drop these two guys out in hooks. Um, you make it really hard for him to complete anything. There probably were, I mean, I don't know. You have to get in the right type of um, passing concept to be able to hit something in a three-double cloud. And he's going to find somebody. He's going to be able to find somebody. Um, after scrambling around, find him in the zone. And he gets first down. I think they also did call um, a targeting here, if I'm not mistaken. I think they called a targeting, which it was the right call. They're going to review it. If you go back here, they're going to review it. Well, I don't think this was the review. This is just a replay. But if you look back on it, he launched helmet to helmet. That is targeting 100%. 100% targeting. Tough play for him. He's going to be ejected. But he got out in the second quarter, so basically he's missing the whole game. Um, or I guess in the rule book, that's how they see it. He got out in the first half, so he's not going to have to miss any of the next game. He's just going to have to miss the rest of this game. Tough for him, but um, could be worse. Here you go. Um, looks like another uh, down in, in some distance. Third down and third and long, and it's almost going to be an interception. I'm trying to see what kind of coverage they're running here. Uh, looks like they're trying to get too deep. Might be like an inverted Tampa 2, which it, it, it kind of looks like an inverted Tampa 2, but they have no flat defender down here. So, But they're definitely trying to play coverage once again. Definitely trying to play coverage. And something that you notice as well is they're definitely trying to disguise their coverage because this is um, their linebacker who's getting out of there, getting to the deep middle. Kind of seems like inverted Tampa 2 to me without having a definitive flat defender down here. But they're definitely trying to get a flat defender over here. Um I don't know. This is a different way to get to too high, to a too high coverage or a Tampa two type, but it's a third and long. So once again, trying to keep everything in front of him, almost an interception from the cornerback down here. He's unable to come down with the ball on third and 11. In the Treasure State, University of Montana football is a way of life. Lithia Ford has long been a proud sponsor of Grizz football. And Lithia Ford of Missoula is thrilled to have several of the best Montana football seniors driving the best trucks in Montana. Aspen Sound is the premier car audio and accessory shop in Montana. Aspen Sound makes sure the boys are riding in style with tinted windows and state-of-the-art stereo systems. There's always a party in Montana. Whether you're going to a concert, a wedding, or a football game, the Montana Party Bus will get you there. Skyline Sports and ESPN MT cover the big sky with more depth than anyone. Check out SkylineSportsMT.com and tune in to Nuanas Now on 1029 ESPN Missoula every day. My Montana Roots and Wear Your Roots Clothing is your go-to spot for the most unique and comfortable lifestyle clothing you'll find anywhere. And get your custom t-shirts to support your favorite player. From five local businesses who love Montana, best of luck to the Grizz as they pursue another Big Sky Conference championship. Montana State's got the ball back. 14-0 lead, seven and a half minutes to go in the game. First and 10, they're going to hand it off to Scott Trey Humphrey. He's going to get another really, really long run. Really good block here from your um, receiver. Alexander, keep your eyes downfield, run them off initially, but then when you got to get into the block, it's a game really good of, this is a really good job of flipping your hips, understanding where you need to keep that guy from getting, and then a good move from Scott Trey Humphrey here, put your foot into the ground, make that guy miss, he doesn't strike me as a guy who's like super elusive, um, he's a really, he's a bruiser type running back, he's got really good speed, but he's not somebody who's going to make you miss in a phone booth, but you know, He's able to um, make some cuts and get upfield, change direction, and he does it right there and gets really, really good yardage there. So that might have been his 50-yard run right there. See where they started that play at. They started at the 35. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, right around 50, man. First and goal, six minutes to go in the game. Six minutes to go in the second quarter, not in the game. Once again, they're going to hand it off to Scott Trey Humphrey. Looks like a split zone play here. Split zone. Got the um, pre-snap motion with Ty McCullough. They're going to hand it off to Scott Trey Humphrey. He's going to get a little bit of pushback right here, right when he gets to the line of scrimmage. Um, but he's just going to follow his tight end up in there. And eventually, the hole opens up for him, and he goes in virtually untouched. 
It's going to give Montana State the 21-0 lead. 21-0 lead. Here you go. Get to watch again. Inside zone here. Washing him. You see the right tackle washing this guy down. Doing a really good job of washing this guy down. Washing him, washing him. Tight end's trying to get across to get the end man on line scrimmage. He's not going to be able to, but he's going to keep working. He eventually gets upfield to help Scott Trey Humphrey open up that hole and get into the end zone. Great play. Great play right there. Here you go. 21-0 lead, four and a half minutes to go in the second. And it's going to be a sack, man. Montana State's D-line just keeps rushing, keeps rushing. They're going to end up rushing four. They drop one out, though. They're going to drop their end out. He's going to be in coverage. That might have been what maybe messed up um, Dante Sashore. It looks like his eyes were in that direction. There's he. This is really the only quick route they have. Not that he needs a quick because they're only rushing four. It should be protected. But um, they're going to keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Eventually, they're going to get there and come up with a sack on Dante Sachere. Really good play there. Here you go. Getting in pump formation. They're going to punt it away. And they get a fair catch. And just an unnecessary hit right here. I mean, he must not have been looking at him. I mean, he's looking directly at him. He watched him. He watched him fair catch that. Is he? I kept thinking, like, maybe he looked away. Is this the long snapper, too? Yeah, this is a long snapper. I mean, gosh. Whoever this is that got pushed down. Dang. But still, like, he watches him. He watches him fair catch it. He fair caught it right there. You're looking directly at him. Directly at him. In front of God and everybody. We see you look directly at him. Did he say something to you before the game? Did he say something to you during the game? Like, you must have really wanted to put a hit on this guy. Because clear as day, he fair caught it right there. And then, we don't have any sound. But it... I don't know what you're saying here. Why are you waving your hand? Yes, that means fair catch. That means don't hit him. Why is he? I don't know. Man. <laughs> Definitely a weird sequence right there. Here you go. Montana's got the ball first and 10 around their 50-yard line. Tommy Malat is going to pull it on the read. Good read right here. You're reading the end man on line of scrimmage. Um, end man gets beat. He gets him out leverage, and Tommy Malat's going to keep it and get out of bounds, save from taking a hit. Really good job there. Really good job there. Here you go. You got third and two coming up. Third and two coming up. You're going to snap it, hand it off to their running back. This time it's running back Jared White. Like I said, they played a ton of running backs in this game, but third and two, and Jared White's going to get the first down. Good job right there. Good job right there. Two minutes to go after the two-minute timeout. Montana State's on the ball, 21-0 lead. Pre-snap motion for Taco Dollar, and he's getting up the sidelines. And they get the running back untouched into the end zone. Really good play here. So what this concept is, is you send your tight end up the field on the pre-snap motion. Not even your tight end. This is a receiver. So you send your receiver on the outside up the field. He runs like a post. And then you send Taco Dowler on a wheel route. Um, it looks to be man coverage. So in man, whoever is covering the running back in man has to be there. Um, it seems like nobody's covering the running back in man because he's wide open. But it seems like everybody else is in man coverage. You got man down here, off man down here, one high safety, man and man, both going with their receivers in man coverage. And then you got the running back wide open. So I don't know who was supposed to have the running back in man coverage. or, um, But either way, he gets into the end zone untouched. Really good job there. Really, really good job there. Easy touchdown for Montana State. Very easy touchdown. So that receiver is Ryan King, number nine. Easy play there for Montana State. Um, not so sure what Portland State was doing in coverage, um, but maybe a back was most likely a backer was supposed to peel with him because they had the one high safety. Um, but here you go with Brody Greeby getting in on the action. He's going to be rushing here on the outside, and he doesn't even seem like he's rushing. He's trying to rush too fast. Seems like he was trying to play just in case – you know, he was potentially maybe booting out this way or if there was potentially something going on. I don't know, but he's he's not getting off the ball super fast. But once he decides he wants to go get to the quarterback, he um, rips through on the left on the right tackle and gets to Sachere. 
really, really good play right there. Really good play. Tough for this right tackle right here. He fooled you, man. He fooled you and got to the quarterback. Good play on second and eight from Brody Gerby. You go first and ten for Montana State. 30 seconds to go in the second quarter. And they get the ball off to Rohan Jones. And once again, so we talked about the Taco Dollar play. Not great tackling there. This just looks like uh, four verts. This looks like four verts here from Montana. Oh, no. So they're running an out concept up here. Like a 10-yard out. He's tight turning it. 10-yard out with a fade on the outside. More fade on the outside. But I think that's time to call up there. And then down here, this just seems like um, two verts. Two verticals. They hit him in the seam. Good ball from Tommy Mallott to layer it over the linebackers. Get it into your guys' hands. And this is where the, I mean, piss poor tackling right here. Piss poor tackling. Right here. Not a great attempt at a tackle. Right there. Should have just brought him down. Almost bringing him down. He's dragging you. And then he gets into the end zone. I mean, this is tough. 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 Very tough right there from the Portland State defense to not be able to get him on the ground. Makes it a 35-0 to zero ball game right before half. That's another thing that was tough about this. Look at the clock. When they snapped the ball, they had 30 seconds left on the clock. Um, I mean, it's first and 10. At least hold him to three. I mean, at least hold him to three. This is a play where he should get on the ground some way, somehow. Just doesn't seem like these guys are selling out enough to try to get him on the ground. And with that, um, he gets in the end zone. You know, 12, hit the ball or something. I guess he tried. Either way, though, the touchdown is 35-0 ball game. Drop back, get it out to your um, receiver, and you're gonna throw a re you're gonna throw an interception. So it seems like I think Monta at this point Montana State, uh, 13 minutes to go in the third quarter. I think they had taken a lot of their starters out of the game. Um, that's something else that contributes to some of the scoring that you see on Montana State. Montana State is they don't play a lot of their players in the second half. Um, their players are playing one half, and then they're out of the game, which is good. You know, you want to try to preserve their health as much as possible. But here you go, trying to throw it deep. Montana's playing – Montana State is playing um, coverage on the back end. And um, Dante Sachery just throws it up, and it ends up being an interception. Didn't have a ton of pressure in on him, but it's just not a great pass, and it's going to be intercepted. Tough play right there. Join Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any Town Pump across Montana. Plus, earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com slash rewards to register and start saving. Here you go. Second and 12 coming up for Montana State. And they get the ball off to Taco Dollar. Ten and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Let's go. Excuse me. They're going to get um, a little boot action here. A little boot action with Tommy Malott. Get it out to Taco Dollar on the um, on the whip route. Coming inside. Getting back outside. You got um, Ty McCullough on the out. Burst corner out concept up top. Out up top, but really they're trying to get guys in his vision and Tommy Lott's vision. Taco Dollar gets upfield and gets about five yards, six yards on first down. Here you go, pre snap motion with Ty McCullough. He's going to get the handoff, and this is where he actually going to get injured. And I don't want to speculate, but the way this looks right here, that's exactly how I broke my collarbone. So I don't want to speculate and say it's a collarbone. I definitely think it's a shoulder injury, but he was down and in pain. He was down and in pain. And I know exactly when you're falling and then somebody puts their body weight on you like that, that's what causes the collarbone. At least that's what caused mine. And I hope for Ty McCullough's sake, middle of the season, past the halfway point in the season, really, um, he wouldn't be able to return from that this year. So um, hopefully it's not that dire. Hopefully, Worst case scenario, it's a it's an AC joint. So we got Mr. Hardy getting interviewed here during the live copy, but we're also still breaking down the game. So Sashere is going to keep the ball. Um, he's going to keep it on a read. Um, I don't know if he was supposed to. It really looks like he's supposed to go back this way. They got the two tight ends pulling like it's a quarterback counter, kind of like quarterback counter. But also you got this guy blocking as if he was going to hand it off. So if he was going to hand it off to the running back, the running back had a blocker. But it looks like 
Um, I can't tell who this is getting in the backfield. Their guy gets in the backfield, and that really is what I think made. Um, yeah, because look, he's going. If he was going to follow these blockers, he's going right here. That D tackle, D end is right in his vision, so he's just going to follow the running back, and it's going to end up being a loss of yardage. So, not a great play there. Not a great play there. Here you go. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter, second and 12. Drop back pass, and he's just going to miss. Running a little stick route down here where it's an out, and he tried to tight turn it. I don't think he needed a tight turn it. I think he thought that the guy, I mean, he's honestly not wrong here, but it's not cover two. This guy's just jumping it, but it's really a cover three. So you got this guy dropping down in a in a, in a, in a hook. You got this guy drop in a hook. You got this guy in a curl flat. You got this guy in a third. He's just looking to bite the pass. He's watching the quarterback's eyes. He's in zone, doing what he's supposed to do. This guy doesn't need to tight turn it. He should have kept running away, and instead he tight turned it, and um, they're on, not on the same page. Just not on the same page right there. Montana State gets the ball back. They end up kicking a field goal, making it a 41-0 to ball game. And this is when Portland State's going to get a couple of cleanup touchdowns here. You in the third quarter right there. They're going to switch sides, and they get the ball off to their running back, Mr. DeLon Thompson, and he's going to get in the end zone, out leveraging the defender of Montana State and get into the pylon. This is what I mean by, you know, teams end up scoring on Montana State when they have their backups in. Um, here you go. They get another field goal. Making it a 44 to seven ball game, and then to end it off, they're gonna hand, uh, their quarterback is gonna drop back, try to find somebody downfield. He's not gonna see anybody. He's gonna get to that exact same pylon that Delon Thomas got to. And man, I know this feeling. Just dropping the ball when you're getting beat up. It's like, ugh, I'm not gonna celebrate or nothing. I've done that before. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, that's gonna conclude this breakdown. Montana State gets the dub. They move to eight and zero. They will play. Who do they play next? They will play Eastern Washington next in Cheney. So they're on the road for back-to-back -back weeks before they return home against Sacramento State. Um, and then they go back on the road to play UC Davis. But they have Cheney. Uh, they're in Cheney next week against 2-5 and five, Eastern Washington, who just lost to UC Davis. That wasn't as... Um, that was a pretty close game, to be honest, that UC Davis Eastern Washington game. But um, you guys let me know what you thought about this Montana State game. What do you guys think about the injuries that seem to be stacking up on this team? Does that worry you as a Bobcat fan, or um, do you feel pretty confident in the roster that you guys have? Um, either way, subscribe to the channel. Leave me a like down below. Um, comment below as well. Let me know what you guys think, and I will catch you guys next time. See you later.